Welcome back to Harmon Homestead. So yesterday we were in flip-flops and shorts and today I'm in long sleeves, jeans, and boots. It's cool in Alabama today after that big storm last night, but our gardens needed that and we have corn growing everywhere. Peaches and cream and I planted Silver Queen this week too at another location. So we're rocking and rolling guys. Everything we've planted this week, we've used transplants mainly. That's the main thing. And this has been the year of the tomatoes. I have planted, I'm gonna say 75 tomato plants. I'm hoping that I will have plenty for canned green tomatoes to fry up, salsa, sauce, fresh tomatoes on a sandwich. I mean, I'm ready for it. So let me tell you, if you plant tomatoes, especially at a large quantity, you're gonna need some kind of support for that plant. Now, we like tomato cages. This year, now I did a video on the cattle panels and we're gonna try that. We're gonna try it, but I've never done that before. Normally, you're gonna need a cage to put your tomato plant in, that way it'll have support and grow. Because if you have um, an, an indeterminate variety, then they grow huge, they're unlimited, they'll grow to the max until something finally takes them out, frost, disease, whatever. You need some kind of support. So, today, I'm gonna show you how to make tomato cages from concrete reinforcement wire. If you don't know what that is, I've got it in the background over here. I'm gonna show you step by step. To simplify it, if you know what I'm talking about, make you a cage out of this. If you don't, I'm gonna show you step by step. So the tomato cages that we've used before, they don't have any way to stake themselves into the ground. So I always take these rocks out of this pasture garden I'll tell you about. It's on a hillside, it's full of rocks, and I put those around the bottom of the cage. That's not ideal though. I don't like having to do that. I love these cages right here because we've pretty much made our own stakes on the bottom of these. So y'all, this is the way to go. I'm telling you, this is the way to go. Tomato cages are very expensive. If you buy them, it's just, look, if you got this wire laying around, use it. Now you could use a uh, chain link fence to do this. You could use whatever, but this is what I've got and we're gonna do it. So, step one, I'm gonna literally show you how to do this in the video. I'm gonna back myself up over here. We're gonna roll our wire out. Let me back up just a second. I've got gloves on. These are goat skin gloves. They're very strong but there's holes all in these. Guess what? That's for making these cages this week. I've got some scratches, okay? It's pretty gnarly, all right? Wear you a long sleeve, it worked out perfect with this weather. Jeans, shoe covering, whatever, okay? Because this stuff is sharp and it will hurt. It will hurt if it, you get on it. Now, when you're rolling out this wire, if you're doing it like today, I'm doing this alone. This is my project. Husband can't help, he's doing other things. I've got some old paver stone here that I'm gonna to use to kind of hold it down. Just use something heavy to set the wire down to keep it from rolling back up because it comes in a huge spool, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is roll it out here. All right, I think you can see this in the video. I've got two of my stones kind of down here. Really could use a third, but that's what I got. Another stone propping them up right there. See how it's in those squares? Two things you need. You need something to cut with, okay? To cut this wire. It's strong, it's heavy. Now, you might be strong enough to use a pair of like fence pliers just to cut right through it. I don't have that kind of arm strength. So I've got a huge pair of bolt cutters here, but it cuts it like butter. They're just heavy. So you need that. And then you need, I've just got a rusted old pair of pliers here and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with those. Okay, that's all you need. Now. You could cut it right here, right there. Roll him up, make you a cage. I like to save money, okay? Y'all all know that by now. I'm all about saving money. What we do is we're gonna cut it in half and I'm gonna get two cages out of one's length. Let me show you. So it may all be standard. I don't know. Ours is 10 squares long is how we want it, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. And what I mean, the length of your spool, okay? Ten. We're gonna count down ten squares as well to make it uniform. 
So starting up here with our first square, if you can see this in the video, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna put my foot on ten and go right above it, right here, and cut. Now, remember, when you start cutting, this is gonna wanna bounce up. This is, y'all, this is dangerous working with this, okay? Where eye goggles, whatever. I'm using my feet as a leverage to keep it down. So you're really counting on your, well, you're cutting on square number 11. Now, I'm gonna start over here. And this is just how we do it. You can do it any way you want to, but this is to save the most money. Okay, see how that just popped up? Be very careful with this stuff, guys. Now, what I'm going to do is literally cut him down the middle. We've got 10 squares, okay? 10 squares long. Essentially, one's gonna be four squares high and one's gonna be five squares high. So just count, I like to count five. One, two, three, four, five. And then start cutting. Right through there with your bolt cutters. Now at this point, I usually try to stand on both pieces. So here sometimes you have to go from the other direction. Honestly, it was easier to work with when it was much heavier. Lifting up on my foot here. That's it. Okay. He's cut. Now how are we gonna make this a cage? One side is pretty flush. Okay, that's not enough to hold into the ground. But look where we cut. Look at those stakes. Now, this part has been the worst part of all as far as doing for me, per se. I like to lay him out. Get back in the camera. I'm going to put a stone back on him. I picked him up just to show him to you. This is going to be one that is five long. The other one is four. This is where your pliers come in, y'all. Doesn't matter which side you use, what side you start on. And let's see here. Do this. I'm gonna take my pliers, okay? Put them right on that wire, pinch them down, go in like that. You're, now you're making your hooks, okay? When I get down to the end, I'll show you. I'll zoom in. See how I'm turning my hands around this because I don't have enough grip or strength with this do it all in one turn. I'm taking it and I'm turning the tool to use it against itself. Anybody that says homesteading is not educational, forget it. You talk about physics right there. That's mass. You're talking about velocity with this stuff flailing around everything else. Force. There's a lot of science and mathematics that goes into homesteading. That's pretty much all it is, y'all. You see how I'm doing this? If you can zoom in on the camera. See, I'm turning back the way I want it. Turn, let's see if I can get real close. Take my, see that? See how I'm turning him in? One last one, I'll try to get real close. Do you see the hooks? I know it's hard to see. Take these old pliers, put them down, clamp, clamp hard. Take it and spin it like that, back around, just like that. Now, we've got a cage. We have a cage, y'all. So you're gonna prop him out like this, kind of push him forward. You want everything to line up nice and neat. And just like that, it did. Now, what I like to do is take him kind of mash to secure him. Make him round, nice, neat, the whole nine yards. He might 
need to be repositioned there. Okay. There you go. There's a tomato cage. This will last for eons, y'all. I mean, it will last. Now, we're going to do number four. So, what I'm saying by five, y'all, one, two, three, four, five. The other one is going to be four. Okay, but there's your stakes. And what's beautiful about these is they're sturdy, they're heavy, and it, it will support anything. Furthermore, you can hang stuff on this. I did a video on canning lids to label your plants. Y'all, that is the most beautiful sound. Keeps birds away. Scares off my own chickens. So, it sounds like wind chimes in the yard. All right, let's try this one. You don't need your bolt cutters once you cut that piece of wire. Maybe a little bit better. Take that right there and end. It doesn't matter which end. It don't matter at all. Turn. Just like that. But be careful like right there because that'll hurt you. Optimally I would have gotten from that side. Again, you can make these any height you want. You can make them any width you want. This is just what we've done. You get two out of one length. You may have 12 squares to your wire. I don't know. You might could get three out. That's it. A stone out of the way. Remember, it's gonna bounce up. Ooh, it's windy, y'all. Take this, go down, hook him in. There you go, there's the four square one. Now, if I was really trying to do this to the best of my ability, I go back through with my bolt cutters and I cut all those little stops sticking out. If you got kids, a lot of animals, something like that around this, that would be pretty smart, okay, to get those sharp points off where I cut that wire. But there's your hooks. Stakes still look good. We got enough length. This will sit down in rocky clay soil and it won't budge. That, y'all, is how you make tomato cages. I did it on my own. So, what do I always say? If I can do it, you can do it. Stake the plants. We're going to um, try the cattle panel. I already had it there, so I was going to put used to it. I got this wire and I'm gonna keep on making these cages, okay? <laughs> Before I lose y'all, I'm gonna let you go, all right? All right, so we're in the pasture garden and I am getting ready to put these cages to use. You can see them behind me there. I'm gonna show you really quick my corn that sprouted. I'm so excited. So if you have never seen corn, there it is. Right there, see that though? That pinwheel? I did a video on keeping chicken hawks out of your yard anything bright flashy guess what else it does it keeps the crows away too for a buck guys for a buck you can put this in your garden and hopefully it'll keep the crows away and they've been crowing all morning but they've stayed out of here so that's great but anyways our peaches and cream corn look at it ah, i'm so excited so excited it's really bright out here guys but anyways i stuck a few of those pinwheels down to keep the crows away but look at that corn it's so bright it's hard for me to see the camera the rain last night could not have been any better on it but when corn is first germinating like that right there the crows will come in and they'll look like a weed eater has just gotten a hold of your garden i mean they'll just be little little clippings everywhere so anything bright and flashy will keep them away. And that sun, whew, it is bright. All right, so let me show you the cages here. Let me get out of my corn. 
Oh, look at it down here. Now that, y'all, that is planted too thick. I know that, but I did that for the crows. That way, in case they got a hold of it, that they would leave me some left. I don't know. Anyways, I can always go in and thin it out, and I will here very shortly. But I want to come up tall enough that they would, do not want to fool with it. So, here's the tomato cages. You see the soil? And I saw an interesting article this week. I'm just going to throw this out there. Someone said, I see all of y'all trying to make these raised beds, but soil of any kind, unless it is pure sand, is good. So, take it for what it's worth. You might could grow something that you weren't expecting in rocky clay soil. Look at these tomatoes. I mean, hey, look over here. He's been planted a week, and look at that deep green stem. It's worth a shot. And this puts up kind of a barrier. If you have deer, just the more in their way, the better. Look here. Just like that, down in the ground. That's it, y'all. That's not going anywhere at all. We got one more here. Put him right here, just like that. Just kind of step on him a little bit. And that gets him down in there. Now I'm gonna come back with canning rings and old used lids, tie them on here with yarn, shiny, flashing, make a clanking sound. This tomato's been in the ground for a week too. Look at that, y'all. That's a big boy. Big boy tomato variety. He's doing good. Look at that deep green. Love it. So y'all, we're gonna get back to making these tomato cages, grow something. We'll see you next time on Harmon Homestead.